young individual who had confusion as well as weakness after a viral illness. You're seeing the flare scan on the left and a T2-weighted scan on the right. Another example of the flare scan and the T2-weighted scan in this individual, there was no enhancement that was seen on the post-gadolinium enhanced scans. And once again, this occurred after a viral illness. Best diagnosis here. Would you say it's most likely acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, multiple sclerosis, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, or none of the above? We'll start the timer. Right. We can start the timer and we'll, again, this is the alphabet soup or the eponyms of ADM, MS, PML, PRESS, or none of the above. Okay, so overwhelmingly the vote is for ADM and certainly with the history that I gave you of occurring after a viral illness, that would be the best diagnosis. And this is just to, once again to emphasize that ADM is an entity that may affect the gray matter. As you see, this is a predominantly a thalamic involvement. You see subcortical white matter and in involvement of the insular cortex as well on the flare scan. So when we think of ADM, we have to think about a lesion that is, while well, typically we put it in the white matter disorders, will affect gray matter, in particular the basal ganglia. Which of these is a mismatch? ADEM with delayed type hypersensitivity, multiple sclerosis with optic neuritis, PML with JC virus, and PRESS with decampsia or none of the above. Which of these is a mismatch? Go ahead and uh, start the timer here. ADEM with delayed type hypersensitivity. You can start the timer. I'm just going to over speak. MS with optic neuritis, PML with JC virus, PRESS with decampsia or none of the above. Okay, and the audience responds with a mixture here of uh, answers. The correct answer is none of the above. ADM is a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction to the white matter um, and is an immune-mediated abnormality. MS, we see optic neuritis in the course of MS in about 80% of patients who have multiple sclerosis at some point in their course will have an episode of optic neuritis. PML and the JC virus, that is correct. And press, eclampsia, or malignant hypertension, those are correct answers as well. So the correct answer here was none of the above. So ADM we say is monophasic, but in point of fact, we may see cases where the lesion evolves over the course of weeks to months. And therefore, it may be a little bit confusing in that you see evolution in a polyphasic fashion. It is post, often seen post-viral or post-vaccination, and in fact, I probably am one of the few people at, at Johns Hopkins who does not get the flu vaccine because of the sphere of ADEM as a neuroradiologist. Um, it is a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction to the myelin basic protein. We've seen this as a cause of optic neuritis. We've seen ADEM within the spinal cord. We've seen it occur with optic neuritis and be in a differential diagnosis of Devic syndrome with both optic neuritis as well as spinal cord transverse myelitis. Once again, do not be concerned if you see gray matter involvement, that may actually be quite typical of ADM. And there is a fulminant hemorrhagic form, which is called hemorrhagic glucoencephalitis or Hurst disease. This is a patient with multiple sclerosis. And as you can see, more confluent disease than is typical. This is a case that we initially were considering ADM. Um, does involve the regions around the corpus callosum and had some funky enhancement, but this was a patient with multiple sclerosis. When we think about multiple sclerosis, I think one of the important factors that you should be aware of is reporting in your reports of multiple sclerosis in a way that helps the clinician make a diagnosis thereof. And to do that, you have to know the McDonald criteria. So this is a question as far as your knowledge of the McDonald criteria of multiple sclerosis. Which of these is included in the McDonald criteria of multiple sclerosis would be one or more infratorial lesions, three or more juxtacortical lesions, two or more gadolinium enhancing lesions, or two or more gray matter lesions. 
So go ahead and start the timer there. And this is uh, going to be a little bit of a review of the McDonald criteria. One or more infantorial lesions, three or more juxtacortical lesions, two or more GAD enhancing lesions, or two or more gray matter lesions. Which of those is one of the McDonald criteria? So let's uh, show the answer. So we have a little staircase effect here with most people going with the one or more infantorial lesions. And that is indeed the correct answer, as you see here. So the McDonald criteria is one gadolinium enhancing lesion or nine T2 weighted hyperintense lesions if there's not gadolinium enhancement. So I teach my fellows, you really have to count the multiple sclerosis plaques up to nine. And we say there are more than nine. So that way we are giving the clinician the feedback that indeed this McDonald criteria is, criterion is met. One or more infratentorial lesions. So we count how many lesions are in the brainstem and cerebellum, middle cerebellum, pedunculus, et cetera. We count whether or not there are juxtacortical lesions, that is the subcortical white matter, or three or more periventricular lesions. So you must have three of four of these for the McDonald criteria. And when we speak to gadolinium enhancement, we're talking about over three months after a clinical attack at another site or a gadolinium enhancing lesions or a new T2 lesions. This is as you look at the patients as a polyphasic disease. So these are criteria that you probably should post up in your, uh, in your review room and look at them when you do come up with a patient with MS and try to report the case in a manner that will help the clinicians as far as deciding whether or not they are, the McDonald criteria are met. So the correct answer was indeed number one, one or more infratentorial lesions. One of the foils was PML. PML in my experience, has been more of a posterior and often a posterior fossa lesion, uh, more confluent than multiple sclerosis and not usually your flame-shaped Dawson fingers by any means. In this case, the previous case that I just showed, you see the absence of enhancement, although more and more reports that PML may show some contrast enhancement have been made. I will right, we'll move to case number six. This is interesting.